Hey there everyone. When Destin from Smarter Every Day told me he was coming to England, I wanted to make sure he had an authentic British experience. Brown sauce, professional level wedding dancing, but most importantly, a visit to the Royal Society to meet with Keith, the head librarian. The question of course was what would Keith bring up from the archives that he thought might appeal to a person like Destin? Well, here's the answer. I just get to ask questions? Yeah, let's, well let's have a look at a, a book first. Now I understand you're interested in ballistics, gunnery, rocketry, that kind of science. I, I, yeah. think, I think you've got, you've done your homework, yes. Rockets. So we have here the guy who really started it all, Benjamin Robbins. Now he's not a scientist that many people have heard of, I suspect. He was a, an 18th century Newtonian, but he pretty much invented the science around how bullets travel, how fast they travel, and he did some rockets as well. Okay. So let's have a look at them. This is um, his great book. The principles new principles of gunnery. of gunnery. Have you come really? across this one? No, I've never ah, seen this. Right, okay. okay. So uh, what he was interested in was a uh, question of uh, how do you, in the age before fast photography, how do you find out how fast a bullet goes? Okay, uh, I'm liking it already. I like ah. fast photography. That's one of my hobbies. We're going to film it at 2200 frames per second. So it's a problem that he, he got to grips with and uh, you might just be able to see the implement he invented here. Now then, have you come across one of those before? This is, is it a momentum trap? Yeah, a ballistic pendulum is okay. what we were calling it at that time. I've used something like this. We called it a momentum trap, mm -hmm. and what we did was you would hit it and you had a known mass. Am I okay to touch this? Yes. Okay, so we would hit it and we would see how far the pendulum would swing. That's exactly right, yeah. So how did he do it? How did he know the maximum height that it went. He had to have something that would move up and then stop. Well, he, he, he invented something rather cool. So he attaches a, a plate running across here. There's a small steel hinge there and he runs a ribbon down it so that when the pendulum swings back on the impact, it takes the ribbon with it. And he can measure the distance that the ribbon travels. That's right, yes. That's clever. When was this? 1700s? So, yep. So this is okay. in the 1740s. Now we have a lot of Benjamin Robbins notebooks in the collections because he uh, left them to the Royal Society. Uh, so these are uh, just examples of his commonplace books. You can see in this one, there are some rather nice drawings. One of the things Robbins was interested in was low muzzle velocity weapons. And uh, he's generally credited with the idea behind what became the carronade. Uh, in the British Navy. I don't know what a carronade is. It's a, it's a short, far more stubby weapon that was used usually at close quarters okay. in ship-to-ship -ship actions. Huh. But how did those projectiles behave? That was one of the things he was interested in. I'm interested in that as well. And again, uh, he invents something called a, a whirling arm. And this was to try and get a picture of what happened to objects traveling at speed. Uh, and the principle is, is pretty simple here. So you have a... Is this to determine the shape? That's right. So you've got. So this is the, he's trying to calculate the drag coefficient before they knew what the drag coefficient was. That's right. So he puts variously shaped objects on the end of the arm, spheres, pyramids, and you can see what's happening here. Uh, this is like a, a bobbin of thread almost uh, on a larger scale. So when the pendulum drops, yeah. it spins this round very fast. The whirling arm goes round, and that's what he uses to try and visualize what's going on. So basically he, he lets the mass drop and he tries to determine the steady state rotational velocity of the arm, and from that he infers a drag coefficient. That's right, yeah. That's pretty clever. He also did work on rockets. He did rockets experiments. Yeah, I thought Congreve. Was Congreve the guy? Con Congreve was the guy, but Robbins was before him. Con Congreve knew Robbins' work. You're taking and me back? Okay. Yeah, You're let's, let's have a look at some of that. Okay. So this is a paper in the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society in 1749. Observations on the height to which rockets ascend by Mr. Benjamin Robbins. What he's doing is firing off rockets right here in the middle of London uh, and trying to see how far they can go. He's, he's measuring the angles of, of elevation. I like Robbins. Just really beginning this, beginning rocket science, if you like. He's using observation sites 
in and around Green Park, which is not very far it's, from here. It's actually. pretty small too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right, yeah. So they're, they're firing. This is like me doing stuff in my backyard. That's exactly what's right. happening here. So did he, how did he know how high it, it went? Uh, he would have observers at different points and he would he would look and try and measure angles against the horizon. You know, that did, that hasn't changed much yeah. throughout the years. We yeah. still do that. We yeah. just use what we call cinetheodolites today yeah. instead mm -hmm. of people, it's tracking cameras, mm -hmm. and if you have two locations and you know the angles from each, you can calculate yep. the position. That, that's pretty much what Robbins is doing. He eventually uh, gets a job out in India supervising the construction of forts for the East India Company out there, and that's where he dies and his papers are returned to the Royal Society. Hmm. Uh, my absolutely favourite, just small piece of Robbins, which is a very human piece, is just over here. Okay. Well, this is a little notebook of his, uh, and you can see on the front, experiments at Chatham. Chatham was where there's a, a naval dockyard, and he, he did some of his experiments there. But this is his little logbook as well that he kept uh, on his voyage to India. One of the things he does is uh, stop off every now and again, make observations with a, a Hadley instrument, and he records those in this little notebook here. A Hadley. What's a Hadley? It's a, it's a quadrant. It's a okay. quadrant. So he, he's making positional observations as he goes. This is Saturday night, February the 17th, 1749-50. It's getting hotter. He's off the coast of Africa. He's in the River Gambia. And the heat first the began. Gambia. Oh, you've been to the Gambia? I've been to the Gambia. Oh, wow. So yeah. you, you, you know exactly where yeah. he was. He's, he's anchored just off the, the, the river. Uh, the heat first began to be troublesome. Before that time, I had worn the same clothes on board as I had worn in London. So this is, uh, I'm guessing he's pretty close to the equator. Yeah. He's rank, okay. Yeah. Uh, during the winter without inconvenience and had laid in a hammock covered with a sheet and a blanket uh, and a substantial quilt. So he's, he's lying on shipboard in full clothing and, and he's got the quilt and everything on there. Uh, but that night I was obliged to put off the quilt and next day my wig. He's, he's so hot, he's finally had to take off his, his 18th century wig. How undignified. I, exactly right. Um, and I exchanged them for a linen cap and a white waistcoat. So Keith, even like going like to the equator, he, he, he's still going around on the ship with his big Isaac Newton style wig on because that's just what yep. you're supposed to wear. That's exactly right. He's a gentleman and of course that's what he would wear. Don't be silly. Of course yeah, you'd do that. Of course you'd wear your wig. I would, wouldn't you? I would yeah. wear my yeah. wig. So there you go, Destin, look at that. We've got bullets, we've got rockets, we've got the Gambia, we've got wigs. Have, have we delivered the goods? It's pretty interesting. I, I really like the, the drag equation. I like that. Drag equation? We've got wigs. <laughs> go and check out Destin's channel. You already watch Smarter Every Day. Don't go and watch Smarter Every Day. Watch another objectivity video. You've already watched all that guy's videos. Smarter Every Day, one of the best YouTube channels in the world here at the Royal Society and he is going to do our lucky dip into the card catalogue. So Destin, what you've got to do is you've got to close your eyes actually. Your eyes have to be closed for this. To pick the drawer I have to close my Everything. eyes? Everything. So your eyes are closed now. Close your eyes. Okay. And what you'll do is... You